the CNN Belief Blog, which has graciously featured a couple of my pieces over the past year, just celebrated its uh, first anniversary. And they did a little piece on the 10 things they've learned in their year of, uh, of doing this blog, one of which really intrigued me. It was this, that by far the most numerous and vociferous commentators on matters religious are atheists. <laughs> and this corresponds to my own experience as a blogger and YouTube commentator, that by far the most comments and the, and the most energetic ones come from atheists, agnostics, uh, critics of religion. Uh, I know that a couple of my YouTube videos have been uh, singled out by atheist you know, websites and they tell their people to go and put you know, dislike on them and to put nasty comments and so on. I remember it was on the CNN Belief blog. I did a little piece I thought was totally benign on praying for Christopher Hitchens. When the word came out about his serious uh, cancer, I said Christians should pray for this great enemy of the faith. Well, I thought it was a very benign sort of thing and it was flooded with thousands of angry uh, comments. Well, what do we make of this? What do we make of, of this uh, state of affairs? Well, I think it proves that um, atheism has come rather aggressively out of the closet, uh, led by people like Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins and Bill Maher and many others. Uh, atheists have um, said, it's not just my private opinion. I'm going to come forward in a public way because I want religion to go away and, and I want to attack it and to expose it. Now, they're pretty vitriolic, and I think that's a, a bad thing. But, you know, it's a free country, and people are free to express their point of view. So I have no quarrel with that. And I think the last thing in the world we should do is try to block or censor uh, atheists as they come forward publicly. I do think this, though, it should be a wake-up call to my fellow religionists that we've got to fight on our hands. We cannot be content with a sort of marginalized or privatized religiosity. It's my little opinion. No, no, the enemies of the faith have come out very publicly and very aggressively. We have got to be prepared to meet them. It's a wake-up call to our own intellectual responsibility to defend the faith. Now, as I read the New Atheists of Hitchens, Dawkins, and company, what you find is largely a reiteration of classical atheist arguments, going back to Feuerbach and Marx and uh, Comte and Freud and Nietzsche and many others. So religion is a projection of our needy egos. It's a wish-fulfilling fantasy. It's an infantile illusion. It's born of suffering. It's dehumanizing, etc. I mean, very familiar arguments from the classical atheists, and you find them all repeated. Here's my question to my fellow Christians, my fellow believers. Do you know these critics well? I don't mean just the Dawkins and Hitchens. I mean, do you know Freud and, and Marx and Feuerbach, the classical atheists, can you uncover the flaws and difficulties in their arguments? Can you show where they are irrational, where they are unfair to religion? These are the people the new atheists are relying upon. How good are we at engaging their arguments? Furthermore, I say to my fellow religionists, have we read our own apologists carefully? Think of people like um, G.K. Chesterton, C.S. Lewis, uh, Fulton Sheen, Ronald Knox, Francis Schaeffer on the Protestant side. Um, how well do we know them? They engaged these people. They fought with them, you know, 100 years ago in some cases. Um, have we read them? Do we know their arguments? Can we use them uh, effectively? Another side of it, of course, is the appeal to science. A lot of the new atheists, especially relying on, you know, Darwinian uh, evolution theories and on quantum mechanics, quantum physics and so on, will try to undermine the claims of religion. Okay? fellow Christians, fellow believers? Have we read some of that science? Can we enter into those conversations and debates? More to it, do we know our own people who are both deeply religious and deeply scientific? And can we rely on them? I think, for example, of uh, Father John Polkinghorn, who is the Anglican uh, priest and a high-level scientist. Think of Father Stanley Yaki, a Catholic monk and high-level scientist. Uh, Father George Coyne, who's the director of the Vatican Observatory, was the director of the observatory in uh, Tucson. Or Georges Lemaitre, whom I've mentioned before on these YouTube commentaries. The priest, who was a friend of Einstein and a formulator, the formulator, of the Big Bang Theory. Well, when they come after us with scientific objections, do we know those objections? Do we understand them? And can we rely on our own scientific people to uh, counter them? So here's my point. I think it's a, it's a call to arms. The fact that so many atheists have come forward 
to um, attack religion, it means we got to get in there and we got to show some intellectual teeth in this battle. Now, here's my second reflection on the prevalence of atheists on the belief blog and on my own uh, blogs and so on. It corresponds to what I call the Herod principle. In the New Testament, we hear that Herod Antipas had imprisoned John the Baptist because John the Baptist was a critic of Herod's uh, marital status, right? So he was challenging him. Herod throws him in prison. But then we hear, and it's, a, it's a delicious scene, I think. It always captures my imagination. We hear that Herod would sit and listen to John as John would preach in prison. So from his prison cell, he continued to preach and to evangelize. And Herod, Herod, who put him in jail, nevertheless listened to him. He loved to listen to him. See, I think that's very telling. I'm with St. Augustine. Lord, you've made us for yourself. Therefore, our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. We are all wired for God, ordered to God. We have hungers and desires that cannot be satisfied by anything in this world. Atheists can protest all they want. They know it's, they know it's true. There are desires in our hearts and souls that cannot be met by anything in this world. We are ordered by these desires to God. This proves, I think, why, or this shows why, atheists especially love to listen in when religious people speak about religion. And this goes for Christopher Hitchens, who is practically obsessed with religion. Or Bill Maher, the same thing, practically obsessed with religion. There are millions of disciples who appear on these blogs. They're all, I think, little Herods. And now, I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> They are passionately interested in the things of God, even as they uh, protest. So I'd say in conclusion, uh, the prevalence of atheism in the public uh, arena is first of all a call to arms to my fellow Christians and fellow believers. It's a metaphor, don't <laughs> send any comments. A call to intellectual uh, struggle, to an intellectual battle, that we have to arm ourselves intellectually with our own best theological and apologetic uh, figures, we have to know the arguments of our enemies. So it's a call to action. It's also, though, and I say it in kind of a, a teasing way, it's an encouragement to me to keep talking. Because I know that all you atheists out there, even as you protest, even as you sputter, your hearts are still very attentively listening.